um, have, as I said, we sit down most of the time just before a session, which we did this morning, and we channel a bit of information from, spirit, from spirits about the different problems that you uniquely face in, in a particular country. So every country does have its unique issues and, and problems that everyone needs to face emotionally if we're going to grow. And one of the things they mentioned is that they wanted to give you a list of the different issues that are preventing your growth, yeah. right? or preventing things from changing rapidly for you. Many of you have experienced that you've changed a bit when you first found the Divine Love Path, yes? But, but some of you feel a bit stagnant. <coughs> And what, what they wanted to do was list some of the reasons for these for the for the issues of stagnation that occur. Does that make sense? Okay, so the first one we'll start with, with is fears. You all have none, is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one number one fear they listed uh, was the fear of emotional and physical discomfort. Now, does everyone understand that? Yeah. So, emotional discomfort is sort of when there's emotions such as painful emotions like sadness or, or even emotions such as anger come up, there's a degree of discomfort in, in even noticing those emotions let alone allowing yourself to feel them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so if you fear the emotional discomfort, you will, you will have a tendency to desire to prevent your emotions from flowing as a result. If you fear physical discomfort, you will often choose to do things only when it gives you comfort. And so therefore, often, there is a demand coming out for everyone around me to make me emotionally comfortable and everyone around me to make me physically comfortable. And because of those two types of discomfort, these demands come out of us and the demands that come out of us prevent us from growing in love. They prevent us from being more loving. Does that make sense? Does anyone want to ask about that? At all? No? You can ask whenever you wish, by the way. And by the way, when you ask, there's a microphone that we're just going to point in your direction, uh, so don't be put off by it. It needs to only be a couple of metres away from you, so when you ask a question. But that way we get to hear the question that you have. <coughs> so, so just bear that in mind. Number two, they mentioned this, the fear of having to change. <laughs> In other words, many uh, our spirit friends feel that for many people in the US, there is a strong desire to continue in the same way of life as you've been taught that you can expect. And there is a deep fear of having to change that way of life into something that's different. And, uh, and as a result, and, and by the way, something that could be more loving in terms of how, what happens. But as a result of that, because of this fear, we're automatically resistive to, to embracing more loving ways of living. So, so we even become um, almost in denial that there is a more loving way of living when we do that. So that's one of the things they mentioned. And the third involved with that is changing without the E, of course, so Michael will pick me up every time I spell incorrectly, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Changing the way of living is one of the things they mention specifically so that we can become more loving. So, so many of us are afraid to actually embrace the process of more personal responsibility in our living. Now, when I say more personal responsibility in our living, I mean in three or four primary areas of our living. The first one that I mentioned is terms of your water supply. In other words, many of you are very dependent on somebody else pumping water to you, rather than catching your own water and using that to drink. 
Now, why might that be essential, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so the water supply might not always be there. If the water supply is not always there, what will happen then? What happens then? Now, you're completely dependent on power and pumping and all sorts of other things to ensure that you can have your basic survival needs met. Right? One other thing they mentioned is your own food supply. In other words, many times, because, you know, one thing we notice here in the US, and Mary is yet to be at a shopping centre. Oh, well. <laughs> we, went, we went to Sprouts, which uh, Robin said to us, well, we got, I'm going to take you to a little store, or something along those words, she said. We went to Sprouts, and that's about the size of our shops, basically. And so, um, in Australia, so, so we've yet to go to one of those big acre things. That we have here. <laughs> but one thing I noticed last time I was here, and I've been here many times, of course, so um, one of the things I've noticed over those times is there is just so much choice <coughs> that you have isn't there? Yes. Many of you are used to having huge amounts of choice available to you. How do you feel when you go to the shop and the thing that you wanted isn't there? <laughs> How do you feel then? For many Americans I notice there's a frustration and an irritation. There's almost this expectation that it should be present, that particular thing, whatever that particular thing is. Now. If you think about that, firstly, there's a, that's a demanding expectation put upon the shop or, or, or upon the society, which is an unloving expectation of society that they provide you everything that you need. But secondly, because of this wide variety that's available to you, you have the ability to just go to a store and pretty much get anything you want. And therefore, less inclination to actually produce what you want for yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, of course, again, if something happens in your society with regard to the economy or in, with regard to maybe earth change events or any other thing that could happen in your society, and there are indications, particularly with your economy, that uh, things are not as good as they could be, and that your national debt is growing uh, at extremely, extremely la large rates, um, and all of these things could trigger events in the future. And unless you have at least some degree of self-sufficiency, you may find yourself struggling quite, quite a lot. The third thing they mentioned is your own comfort. In other words, being responsible for um, how you make yourself comfortable. So at the moment, um, in most developed societies, Comfort comes from what the society provides to us. So in terms of electricity, for example, power, fuel, and so forth. So at the moment, you have the comfort of being able to get in your car and go down to the cinema any time you want, even if it's like five miles away. You still can go. Because you, as long as you've got some fuel in the tank and you've got a vehicle, off you can go. And a babysitter. And a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps some other things too. But, uh, but it's fairly easy to get what you want in terms of your comfort. If, if you're at home and you're too cold, you just turn up the heater. And there's not much else you need to do. And that power then comes, and as long as you're able to pay for the power, you basically have the heating you want. Now, if you're taking responsibility for your comfort, you won't be as reliable on others to provide you with comfort, and you won't have a demand coming from you that they provide your comfort. In other words, you won't expect that they do all the time. And the key with determining whether you expect it or not is what happens when the electrical power goes off? How do you feel? Is it the same feeling you have when you're in the shopping centre <laughs> and you can't get the thing that you wanted? Same feeling? If it's the same feeling, one of expectation or, and therefore a bit of annoyance or anger, then that's telling you there is a demand there. There is something that's demanding going on. Um, with regard to uh, the fourth thing is just shelter. And most of you have no problems with shelter. Like you've all got a home, I gather. None of you are living on the streets at this point. It's a valid question, but is there anybody living on the streets at this point? I'll just modify the talking to you if you are. But but for most of us we have we have like our homes, we've got shelter and so forth. And 
And, but for many of us, the location of the shelter isn't very practical. So, for example, we might live in apartments like this building, for example, and, and therefore it's very hard to provide these other three things if something goes wrong. Right? So what our spirit friends are encouraging you to look, to look at is changing your way of living to take more personal responsibility for those things. Now, for some of you, that's going to mean even changing where you live if you did that. And so that you could be more personally responsible for your life. The beauty of personal responsibility for your life is there's less demand coming out from you towards society to provide you what you need. The less demand coming out of you, the more loving you're automatically being. So, so if we remind ourselves of, about love being the guiding principle, then we will always want to take more personal responsibility. But also, many of us are used to getting exactly what we want whenever we want it. Isn't that the case, pretty much? And then if that demand isn't met, we usually get upset in some way, like angry, disappointed, feel hurt, or whatever. And changing our way of living needs to occur just to help us to, to stop demanding from other people that they give us everything that we want, and, that, and also to teach us that we are able to be self-responsible, that we're able to be self-sufficient and self-responsible in our day-to-day -day life. So that's part of their suggestion. Now, they say that they are fears that many of you are not even seeing at all that you have. And the reason why is because most of your comforts and desires get met at will, you can't see that what fears are associated with what happens if they weren't there. So my suggestion is to have a feel about if all of a sudden tomorrow there was no power, no fuel, no shopping, right? just those three things, no power, no fuel, no shopping, how would you feel? Can you see that your level of fear would instantly rise up quite quite greatly, wouldn't it? Just with those three things taken away. Now, a person who is self-responsible, if there was no power, no, no shopping, no fuel, they'd be perfectly happy. Because they know that they can provide everything that they need anyway, and they're fine, and they're not dependent on those things for living. Do you see the difference? And so one type of person is going to be extremely confronted. The other person is going to be perfectly happy. with any change in the external environment. And this is what helps us, and, and one of the things they said to us is that many of you are going to be very resistive to us mentioning these things to you. Because, because you're so used to not even seeing these things as fears. It's just a normal way of life that you've had for many, many years. And most of us in the Western world are exactly the same. We've had for many years able to get whatever we want, whenever we want it, and able to do it relatively easily. When I say relatively easy, many of us work quite hard, but it's relatively easy to get all these things we need. And as a result, we don't see that these are actually fears inside of us. Instead, we just see it as, well, I should expect that from society. I expect that we should have those things. And the key is going to be, if you take these things away from you, and, just, and you don't even have to take them away, you can just imagine them being taken away. And allow yourself to feel about it. What would you then feel? Because that's the real feeling that's still within. That's the feeling that's still there. So if you let yourself address that, that would be, that would be wonderful. No questions about that? No. Everyone else going real quiet there? <laughs> You're a bit worried about that one. So, what's AJ talking about? I'm not afraid of all those things. I thought he was going to come up with something more significant. <laughs> Mind you, don't, this is not me, this is your spirit friend saying this to you. <laughs> it's interesting that you bring that up because I'll just wait for the oh, mic to come in. Oh, my apologies. Yeah. You don't have to hold it close. All right. Um, 
all three of those that you've mentioned are what I've been working on, like yeah. very closely. Yeah. Um, I noticed that when I go to actually turn the faucet on and I see the water come out, yeah. I have this feeling this is going to end soon. Yeah. And so yeah. I've been scouting out um, property in Arizona yeah. to specifically to um, confront yeah. all three of those that we're talking about. Yeah. And um, so if anybody's interested, um, that's I'm I'm looking yeah, yeah. in that direction if people want to do it too. I'm doing it with or without anybody. Yeah. yeah. But um, all three of those have been really, really. I can just feel it. It's just it's I can feel it. It's coming. Yeah. And uh, I mean, not saying tomorrow or next week, but. And the key is to not then go into fear again <laughs> about no, all of that. But the emotional discomfort, especially. Yeah. Because as I sit on my sofa, I'm getting like really really present with oh wow you know i have a sofa you know like <laughs> yeah. you know like i need to not have a sofa for a little while and, and, and just feel what that feels like right like be able to just emotionally be able to just pick up and yeah. walk away from all of that if yeah. to. now many of you i know have been for many uh decades concerned about what might happen in terms of earth change events and so forth some of you don't believe in them, and I accept that, and others of you do believe they're going to happen, and, uh, and I'm happy to talk with you about that. But what I was thinking of doing is the general plan today and tomorrow is to just mention what our spirit friends have said, and then we'll talk about a subject uh, today and tomorrow about love, a lesson in love that I'd like to talk about, which is about love conquering evil, or love overcoming, having the power to overcome evil. And uh, then by sort of lunchtime tomorrow, or just after, um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have that are more to do with your uh, way of life, what might, where might be safe locations if a person's interested in that area, in terms of the USA and so forth, in terms of to live, and how to live more, um, in terms of what to focus on, in terms of how you're living. So I'm happy to help you address some of those fears tomorrow, in the afternoon session tomorrow, before we leave.